You know, for years, the CES was like the place you had to be every year. Then for me, it just kind of faded away. But this year, it's the Super Bowl, the World Cup, the World Series, all tied into one. So you need someone who really understands what's going on. Lucky enough, we've got that person. I want to bring an I.O. fund, their lead tech analyst, Beth Kendig. Beth, I know, I know you had to be in heaven this week. We've got to start with Jensen Young, right? Because, listen, he was the center of the universe. Uh, he's moving markets. And, you know, listening to his presentation, and, and listen, I'm sort of a layman when it comes to this, so a lot of it's still, I'm trying to still understand, but it felt like a blitz. Like, he's going after everything, and the company wants to dominate everything, and yet the stock opened a little higher yesterday and then was hammered. What's going on? Hi, Charles. Great to see you. I, I love buy the dip moments in NVIDIA. I live for those buy the dip moments. It, there were certainly some monumental announcements coming out of CES. I would point toward the personal AI supercomputer that they announced. To put it into perspective, for about $3,000, they are going to be able to handle AI models of up to 200 billion parameters. On the market today, Qualcomm's $1,000 AI PC can handle a 13 billion parameter. We're talking models that are 15 times larger. Uh, this is monumental because many investors have expressed concerns about big tech companies not showing enough revenue, not having those big, flashy applications that are pulling in all the revenue. Uh, this facilitates that because not only can developers support AI from the developer side, but consumers will be able to use more AI applications. So that was a monumental announcement coming from what this week. The, what, what about the robot stuff? I'm really pumped about the robot stuff. I think the words NVIDIA and robots should be said more together because I have always had the contention when it comes to autonomous vehicles, NVIDIA, the leading robotics and simulation company, would have the lead here over a company like Tesla. And that was uh, you know, a big debate many years ago, Tesla, Tesla, Tesla. Uh, all investors should be sitting up in their seats right now and see that NVIDIA not only is the common denominator with AI data centers, they will be the common denominator with autonomous vehicles. Uh, you know, another interesting thing and uh, exciting thing was Microsoft saying they're going to spend $80 billion. You just talked about what Wall Street was has been griping about. One of the big gripes all of last year, and the reason all these experts on Wall Street said bail out of the winners and find a, a good, you know, growth stock, a value stock, was that these Z scalers couldn't keep it up. I, you know, that news is absolutely phenomenal. Talk to us about the man uh, for Blackwell and these other chips. Oh boy, uh, Charles, pay attention to those big tech capex numbers. They are communicating something very important, which is that demand remains as we go into 2025. Even more monumental, perhaps, from this last week was that Jensen Wong said Blackwell is going to be on time. That every it's being qualified and in production at every cloud service provider. Those are music to every investor's ears. NVIDIA has led this market, this historic bull market for two years. We want NVIDIA to be on time. They confirm they will be on time. And we're getting confirmation that Microsoft and many others are ready to spend. This, that sets up a great market for AI come 2025. Beth, um, a lot of the uh, names moved on this, a lot of smaller names, I think, were, were introduced, uh, you know, to, during these presentations by Jensen. Aurora Innovations, for instance, is one of them. Um, you know, there's a, a, there's a feeling that these large names are going to eventually dominate and own all everything in all these, uh, you know, budding spaces. But uh, is there room as an investor for some of these smaller names to emerge and really get a piece of the action? Yes. Uh, resounding yes especially when we look at NVIDIA. So now we have these big tech CapEx numbers. We know Blackwell is on time. Uh, what my firm is really looking very closely at is the AI networking stack. And that's because uh, basically you have to realize that AI models are driving an exponential increase in comp compute requirements. And that means that it's reaching the limits of the existing network. The existing network, as you know it today, has to be overhauled. And we know exactly when it has to be overhauled. It's when Blackwell arrives. So there's many little component suppliers within the AI networking stack that we think will hit it out of the ballpark this year. So as, as we move away and, 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 and you know, the hype phase of this kind of goes away, 
Um, what's the, uh, you've already, um, you should see all the notes I've written as you've been talking, by the way. Um, uh, what, should we, what should we anticipate then next? I mean, are, are, there distinct, are, are there distinctive now winners and losers from this? And I'll give you an example. AMD, there's always a hope that AMD will get it together. You know, AMD has done extraordinarily well considering years ago they, you know, uh, and Intel used to eat their lunch regularly. Uh, the CEO is getting a lot of applause, but the stock has struggled, and I think it got a downgrade today. A AMD, Taiwan Semi, are there distinct winners and losers right now? Those are great questions. NVIDIA is going to be the leader in 2025, and it's because of what they're doing with their product roadmap. They're moving AI systems um, from eight GPUs to 36 GPUs to 72 GPUs. People, uh, these other players cannot keep up, whether that's custom silicon from Broadcom or whether that's AMD. However, keep in mind, Charles, that as this continues, the pricing power that NVIDIA has, uh, almost gluttonous pricing power, will come under pressure, and that's when AMD's moment will occur. So mm -hmm. give AMD that time. I would say 2026, 2027. I would not give up on AMD. But with that said, right here, right now, this is NVIDIA's market, and it continues to be. I'm so happy we were able to get you on today, Beth. Again, uh, learned a lot just from our short interview, and uh, we'll be bringing you back on more often because, uh, to your point, this is the place to be. This is where the money is made, and this is where society is changing. And I'm glad we have you helping us understand it. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Charles.